Hi guys, my name is Carlo from the All Balls channel. Welcome to another All Balls special where we have another wonderful guest. He's had a wonderful football journey and he's still going. Keen Lewis, welcome to the show. Hi, hi Khan. How's it going? I know it's been quite a rough couple of days, especially yesterday, considering what we've all been through. I guess. How are you doing? Yeah, it's been it's good as long as you're sitting at home. It's it's nice to see uh, nature taking its path. But I think. Uh, created a lot of uh, destruction on its way as well uh, but luckily we are safe so uh, you know just uh, enjoying the weather from home so okay now you've had a really really illustrious career you played for the likes of mohan bagan delhi dynamos you've also been an isl champion with bengaluru fc all right so i'm just going to start right from the bottom like what made you fall into the game what what made you take up football i think as a kid i was i was a very hyper kid and uh, being the only child it was very difficult to keep me at home and keep me entertained all the time so every every um, you know vacation or summer camp or anything and i would be sent for either trekking or football when it came to sports so i think that was my first introduction to you know football um i was good at other sports as well but uh, you know i i swam state i ran state um i tried lawn tennis cricket table tennis all of that but i think every time i i did the circle and came back to football and uh, it was actually my school and my school principal that really kind of pushed me and my parents cuz um obviously there's nobody from my background uh, you know in my family who's had a sporting career so uh, there was no guidance same within the family um and my principal at that time coincidentally who had the same last name um came from a south bombay school champion and there the football culture was really you know up and running so when he came here to to thane where i was going to school uh his office principal's office faced the the school ground and he would often always see me always like on the ground um so one parent teacher meeting he called my parents and said you know keen's always on the ground why are you guys not looking at sending him outside of the city because there's not much scope here obviously he had seen a higher level of football in in south bombay or uh, you know with the likes of bosco and cathedral and um st francis the ssc and all these schools so so he was the one who kind of you know encouraged my parents to send me out and that's when from then on you know they kind of were lenient in school and gave me the opportunity to take half days or come in late for classes and then go in for trials or go in for training that's how i ended up joining mahindra and other other camps with like maharashtra and all of that but then your first professional foray into football was joining mohan bagan and that too at a very young age what was it feeling like when you joined at, at such a professional young age I'll, if i if i think about it now i actually see a lot of kids who are younger who are younger than me now who join you know professional or who get picked up um i would say i came in a little bit late because i think i joined around when i was 22 because obviously mm-hmm. i left here when i was 17 and then i was in the us for almost 5 years for the half years and then um in that time i was always trying to come back and you know get a look in because uh, you know i was obviously trying to stay abroad and stay in the us or get the playing opportunity there so i tried even going to mexico um got a you know offer there but then the team shot so i was always looking for the opportunity to stay there then i i mean i got an opportunity with uh, houston dynamo mm-hmm. uh, i was working for them i was playing with their academy program uh, but like they have a foreign quota so obviously they have to you know justify why they're taking someone from india who we were like beyond 100 and we are still beyond 100 in terms of ranking um, yeah. so everywhere all the academies and everywhere i was you know knocking on there were all ready to give me a work visa because i had a coaching license i was coaching with houston dynamo i was coaching with another academy so i was a full time coach working at two different places i was doing private coaching um and i was a player so obviously they saw benefit in that because i was high energy i could associate and understand the kids easily because i just came from a collegiate program um mm-hmm. and was in an academy program uh but whenever i came back to india for summer vacation i was always looking for clubs to say you know um either just train with them or you know i looked into say get a trial or uh, if you are happy offer me a contract we'll take it from there 
but uh, i came back i tried with mumbai fc uh, nothing ever happened they were very reluctant, reluctant to give me a trial um i went to pune fc um to bsk all of them but you know trials were not happening they were not ready to just say okay come and train with us all of that um so when i ended up coming i actually had somebody already speaking to uh, bfc for me at that point when i was in the us and then they said okay come in to bfc and you know we'll give you a trial and stuff like that and then when i actually landed up in in bangalore um you know ashley was ashley westman was uh, was the head coach at that time yeah. and uh, i went to him and spoke and then he was like you know we're not actually looking for a player in that position and uh, you know uh, i don't know your agent uh, has just kept messaging me i've not, not really organized a trial uh but since you're here he was like okay we'll see you in a couple of weeks because we're not we're still in off season there's no training going on so in a couple of weeks we'll see you and then uh i have a sort of bengali connection through my building because a lot of bengali people living there and they happened to forward my cv and my videos to one of the members at mohan bagan and uh, there's no official or officially working people they're all just like members and fans and they just mm-hmm. you know kind of put in the word at mon bagan and then in those two weeks i got called up you know to go to mon bagan because they were having trials and whatever training for cfl now since they were training for cfl they were like okay since you're here come we'll give you a look in and uh, i think uh, within those two weeks they offered me a contract and i was like i'm going to bangalore for a trial um in two weeks so you guys have to decide and after the first week they kind of offered me and it took me one week to decide whether i wanted to sign or whether i wanted to risk going to bangalore and um mm-hmm. at that point i said look i've been trying to come into india for a long time and i don't know if i go to bangalore whether this is going to still be on the table so i said fine i'll just i'll just go in with mohan bagan and then um that's how i just ended up signing with mohan bagan and playing there for two years well it's funny how life changes its trajectory for you like cuz i mean eventually we will get to the point where you join bangalore fc as well in the isl but your first foray into the isl was actually playing for delhi dynamos and you played in that one season where you turned out to be the the highest indian scorer goal scorer in that season what was the feeling like playing at the biggest stage of indian football i think going from uh, from the i league obviously um I was excited to play in the ISL it was my first season in the ISL um and some of the players obviously were experienced they had played a couple of seasons um they knew how the system was all of that so for me going into um you know Delhi and plus if you look at my Mohan Bagan career I played about maybe 6 to 10 games in the mm-hmm. whole season and both my seasons at Mohan Bagan we played two AFC tournaments um so we had at least a good 24 26 games in the season and i played only about 6 to 10 which is not even half of it yeah so for going for going into a, a isl team and then playing all the games uh, except a couple which i was injured uh, for me was like a big a- accomplishment because uh, i was coming from a team that was a star studded team in mohan bagan to going into a team where they were playing seven foreigners at that time and only four indians were allowed mm. um so to make a spot uh, in the team to be able to i think just the journey and just the exposure of uh, playing you know going going to sweden playing there going to birmingham playing many matches there we played against west brom um at at the hawthorn um yeah so just that just that entire experience was you know a crazy journey the, the coach zambrota having you know faith to put me in uh, for all the games um you know and us all making it almost to the finals um was yeah. it was a great journey because it was my first season in the isl and then making it so far uh, contributing so much to the team um so i was just happy and then obviously i knew the situation when i went back to mohan bagan but then i knew that i had kind of opened doors because i had played a good season so even if i was not going to be able to get game time in mohan bagan i had um, you know Uh, some clubs that would be interested for me post my contract at mon bagan well i mean you definitely put yourself out there and you were a part of a squad of a setup that had people like florin balura marcelino richard gadze and 
any fun things and experiences you learn from such valuable players while at at delhi i think i think the learning goes on throughout you know every season i've learned something from the players um i think maluda was not so much of a talker but uh, through his actions we would always watch him because he was like a player that we grew up watching on tv so mm-hmm. just to play alongside him to see how you know like his aura was on the field of the field he was always the captain of our team um i think it was marcelino's first year as well and he got the golden boot um uh gadze also was not so much of a talker uh, but okay. i think just uh, by their actions they they spoke volumes you know we always would go and speak to them and they would never hesitate i think maluda's family was there so uh, his his small girl would always be playing with all of us um and he would like he was not one of those kinds who had any issue uh he would always speak to us he would uh, you know talk to us before the games after the games if we had any uh, you know like questions or doubts or anything and uh, uh, i think just both him and uh, zambrota the the influence they had on the rest of the players was immense and i'm sure yeah i mean under the tutelage of a world cup winner like uh, jaluka zambrota I'm sure that also. T- I'm sure you learned a lot of experiences and knowledge passed down from him because I mean, the man's resume speaks for itself. Like, so what was it like under his tutelage, though? Like under the guidance of of Jan Lu- Jan Luca Zambrotta. Sorry, a bit of <laughs> words. Uh, he he doesn't speak a lot. Um, one is obviously because I think language barrier. He was uh, uh, Italian in India. Not not so familiar, but he had a translator, um, and. like for me i think uh, the thing that made us play so well was because he wasn't the coach that would stand on the touch line and yell um, no. obviously because he couldn't yell in english a lot so his team talks would be before the game um in the dressing room at half time and i think that was all he spoke the rest would be his translator if at any point screaming out a few instructions but the rest of the time he was allowing us to play you know not coaching us all the time and i understand the difference after you know i was obviously a coach for two years in in the us so i understand like allowing the players to play and giving them the freedom because that's when they can be creative and um being creative obviously leads to mistakes because you're not going to be successful 100% of the time so uh just enabling all our players to do that kind of gave us an extra 20% of performance in in the field and uh, i think that's what i i mean to say when uh you know they didn't coach us all the time the coaching was in the training field before the game mm-hmm. and at half time the rest of the time was the players implementing what we've been already coached and not being coached at the moment So I mean, that's your breakout season in the ISL, and again, you were the highest Indian goal scorer in that season, which then made you make a move to Bangalore FC. You finally came to Bangalore FC, and you know, like after what you just mentioned, you know, at your trial at Mohan Bagan and stuff, that you were a part of the most successful setup that won the ISL. How did that season play out for you, especially from the start to probably towards the end as well? I think uh, BFC uh, wanted to get me in when I was at Mohan Bagan itself, but I had okay. uh, another year's contract. So uh, right after the ISL at Delhi, um, they wanted to get me in, and I said I have six more months to go into my Mohan Bagan contract. Um, after that, they again approached me, and then um, I was ready to go to to BFC. But then in the ISL, they had the draft. so mm-hmm. kind of players we didn't get the opportunity to select club or you know where we wanted to go um so i ended up going to pune city for for a year and uh, i didn't have such a successful season there um just played a handful of games but then they were still interested and i said you know after not having a successful season at pune and there's a club that believes in me and i was like uh, i i'm going there without without a question so um that was the reason i signed and i said you know i have not played games at uh you know the last i said with pune i have not played enough games with mohan bagan but mm-hmm. there's a club and there's a management that believes 
in my uh, ability in my you know habits and uh, bengaluru has a legacy of winning trophies of having a great club culture yeah and that's something i realized at bengaluru when i went there and i said it just the, just the way everyone talks about it on the outside you know uh, there's discipline there's a family kind of culture the management is good whether you're playing or not everything's on time everything's to improve um you know the players performance to enable the players to be at a peace of mind when they're off the field um there's no uh, pressure there's no sort of oh you're injured you need to leave or you're not playing so we don't want to pay you or you know any sort of that so the players are there are at a peace of mind they want to stay with the team uh you know for more years um mm-hmm. and to be honest that first season um i was a little apprehensive of how many games i'll get because again i was fighting for game time versus you know two national team players which was chetri bhai and udanta so yeah. um but coincidentally uh the head coach again kalis um saw me playing in in a different position uh he gave me the opportunity to play as a center midfielder he in fact saw me play as a left back as a right back um as both wingers as a midfielder so i played probably that season the most different positions that i've ever played in one season i played about five positions so and maybe six i played as a striker for a few minutes as well um so uh, it was a very you know i would say um a very experienced uh, season for me in terms of the positions we played and i played um in terms of success obviously we had a very good squad i would say we had a very good bench strength um which every time came on the field and delivered in the likes of you know chencho um we had boytang we had simboy we had different players who were different qualities and um, i think showed up every time we needed a sub to make an impact uh, most of the time i was a sub as well um, but i had played maybe seven games as a starter and the rest of the games as a sub so out of i think 21 games i had played 17 games so i think for me that was um a sign that you know okay bfc can see me play the coach can see me play as a versatile player in different positions which is why i signed another year under you know the same coach under the same management um to win the isl at mumbai um you know having played in front of my family and friends i think that was a great achievement for me in terms of you know obviously we won the federation cup we won uh, the i league in mohan bagan um i've always been in a squad that has made playoffs whether it was pune fc delhi or mohan bagan uh, in the i league they don't have playoffs but we were always in like the top four finishing um mm-hmm. um fed cup always whether It was the first season where we won in the Fed Cup against Aizol, or we lost to BFC again in the Fed Cup final the next season. Um, so again, for me to actually then be able to win the ISL and and we put in a lot of effort that season as a team, and I think BFC as a team deservedly wins trophies because I think they're honest. The management is honest. The players are honest. Um, the relationship between the coaches, the players, the staff. Um, is a very healthy and um, you know uh, um what it should be environment yeah yeah so it it's not like anybody's trying to cheat the system whether it comes to the players the staff whoever is involved with the club so the moment you start cutting corners and starting to cheat the system whether it's in terms of you know uh, players putting in uh, effort on the field in training um management mm-hmm. giving the best facilities to their players um you know the the coaches the staff you know whether it comes down to the kit boys the masoors the you know the team manager all of them put in their 100% and i think that is why um you know the team comes out successful year after year winning trophies coming into playoffs um and i think yeah you're going to have that one off season that is why you know on a long term you see bfc always in playoffs always winning silverware um and they've also been named team of the decade which means they've been consistent at you know doing what they are doing um so for me that was 
just the entire experience of the culture that they brought in um uh, you know to indian football is something that i would i was you know i was only seeing in when i went to leicester when i was with dynamos um when i was with the collegiate program also just that terms of professionalism taking care of your injured players um you know making and ensuring like when you travel to the away game for a hot you know hotel stay your food is done right um your room is okay your uh, kits are in place your everything is done on time and to the best of the capacity that they can so i think that obviously played an important role in us becoming champions because we were at it day after day whether the people on the field we were doing our job people off the field were doing um you know putting in the same effort that we were on the field the only thing is everyone sees um you know only the players only the coaches in the front but yeah. it, it depends on how much effort the guys behind the you know behind the scenes at the backstage put in the effort in terms of you know social media in terms of your kit sponsors in terms of um you know putting in throwing out bonuses our sponsors through in bonuses saying if you win this game you get you know xyz bonus you get bonus for winning the championship for making it to playoffs all of that uh, so i think the the back staff the uh, backstage management had a lot to do with the success at dfc and, and they continue to um, you know do that obviously i got to see it in my first season at third with dfc wonderful well teen i know we've been talking for a while but now we need you to explain a little bit more we have this little segment that we call explain o gram i know it sounds very cringe worthy and it's still a work in progress and it's basically something which we talk about all your socials and basically describing some of your best memories in your football socials yeah so we're just going to go through a couple of slides and even a video or two and you can just chirp in and let us know what was that feeling like or oh, what was the experience like at the same time yeah yeah and we have our first picture here that's with none other than the brazilian legend rivaldo how did this come uh, so i think uh, we were at uh, one of our games uh, i'm not sure exactly where i think it was kolkata and uh, point was prashant agarwal and uh, he has a lot of contacts in the uk in sweden and just in in general in the in the football uh, world you know he he's always at world cup uh, qualifiers he's always at champion league games he knows all these players like seed off and that's how he got maluda and sembrota and all of these guys uh, so this just happened to be um, i think a meet and greet with rivaldo i think he was visiting um, mr agarwal and uh, we had the opportunity to meet him spend some time he um, shared some of his experiences and his journey um, and we just happened to have like a small photo session in uh it wasn't like it wasn't more than even an hour or two that we got to spend time with him you know um yeah. but i think it was a great i'm sure I'm, i'm sure it must have been like a fanboy moment i mean for me any kind of these players like you meet them like it's like meeting a footballing heroes you know so i mean i'm sure you must have just been fanboy at that point like just going to see rivaldo or to bask in his shadow i think at that point like that's what that's the way i would react at least you know so Yeah, yeah we I move along we were all very excited when when he came in um because obviously we had two world cupers with us and then to get in another one who's played you know for brazil all of that so we were very excited just just to meet you know another player uh, who's accomplished so much absolutely absolutely moving on to our next slide there we go now that's a very iconic football now we we did discuss about your time at at bengaluru fc and of course with the immortal sunil chetri now he's an indian captain he's like probably football royalty in india what was it like you know playing under his tutelage like i've asked you about zambrota and sabram show like playing with one of india's biggest footballers what was that feeling like especially at bengaluru um i think uh, sunil has a big impact on the club the players um the entire system and um you know a lot to do also i mean he's like a second coach at the club um especially on the field um because the coach can 
you know train you and coach you from the sideline but in the field he's always there uh, helping all the players and uh, you know especially the younger ones um he's always speaking to them and telling them you know uh, what to do and you know what uh, they should be doing or what the opponent players are going to do because he's played against 95% of the players in indian football so there's i don't think there's a player that he hasn't played against or he doesn't know so i think um, in terms of the knowledge he shares about other players in terms of his experience and i think those stories never end uh, every time we're at the dining table i think we spend about an hour or two after every dinner especially i mean i would say at away games um, because that's the time we go as a team and we spend away otherwise we're always eating at our own uh, apartments so i think uh, the green tea sessions as we call it is like <laughs> an hour or two after dinner um just listening to his stories gurpreet stories and all like you know the other national team players or the guys who have played years at bfc you know or in indian football like when i was at bfc we had khabra we had um chetri bhai we had gurpreet um obviously gurpreet is the same age as me but his experience in terms of you know him playing abroad is is different um all the other foreign players also um you know are uh, quite informative in terms of what they bring to the table in based on their experiences um so i think that is endless and that knowledge is you know you can't get it from reading an interview of somebody or his interview or the players interviews i think their experiences of what happened at a national camp or when they played against uh, you know a big team um like they are uh, irreplaceable and uh, i think the picture that uh, what you just showed was one of the games that we always played at bsc after training um because when i was with delhi they always were like okay training's over because we had to go back to our hotel um uh, so they were very again with pune we had to go back to our hotel because the training facility was somewhere else but with bsc it was if you trained at bfs uh you came in your own vehicle or the bus obviously if you went back in the bus you had to like wrap up and run but if you came in your own vehicle the ground was like at your service you can stay as long as you want and practice so there were always a bunch of us who would always stay back and uh, always chetri bhai would be there i would be there and good people would be there so that is one of our shooting games that we always did at bfc um after training and uh, that is the snapshot which you just showed so as you guys used to try probably i'm sure you guys definitely played the crossbar challenge a couple of times i'm sure uh we do play the crossbar challenge but then we we used to say that our focus is trying to score the goal rather than trying to hit the <laughs> post so let's practice shooting inside rather than the crossbar and the post <laughs> fair enough fair enough keep moving on to our next slide you probably have i'm sure you'll recognize this one of course a very very fond memory yeah this was private uh, in general <laughs> this was the the championship day we won the uh, the isl um, in mumbai so i mean post that my family was there with me uh, a couple of friends were also at the the game so i got them on the field some obviously couldn't get everybody on the field but uh, um yeah just that experience that uh, that feeling you know of winning because obviously i've never won it before so i was having a little mixed emotions because uh, i didn't know how to react as well and i still remember one of the i think uh, anand tyagi who's one of the hosts and uh, the guys who do all the interviews asked me how i'm feeling and then i just had like a one liner because i didn't know what to say um but i think i was just happy to be there with my family and with the rest of the team who obviously uh, over the course of the year was nothing short of family uh, you know um and i think uh, we were very happy we were excited the party went on into the night after we went back to the hotel as well because um you know we had some like bets we had placed before season thing that you know okay if we win we're going someone's going to dance if we win someone's going to uh you know pop the champagne on you all of that so i think as the night went on we kind of um 
accomplish those post season uh, you know kind of bets that we had taken but uh, uh, the yeah the medal is still in a case um, obviously the trophy is like half my size um, but yeah nothing could replace you know winning that title again Well, thanks for that, Dokin, and that's that's the end of our segment for Explainogram, where we talked about your socials. But I'm just going to ask you a few more questions till we conclude. If you're all right with that, sure. all right. I'm sure at some point you're going to be hanging up your boots. So, do we see Coach Keen Lewis in the near future in a professional capacity? I think definitely because I've already had two years experience in in the US coaching, and I absolutely loved uh, loved the experience with I worked with Houston Dynamo. um i worked with uh, another company called soccer shorts which dealt with very small kids they were from the age of 6 5 6 to 10 12 mm-hmm. and uh, obviously that was less of coaching more of um just allowing the kids to have fun and babysitting and you know that kind uh, but i actually loved the experience with them i went on to go to the albion hurricanes um and i had a full time job i had a full time job offer they were ready to do my uh, visa and all of that but uh, i wanted to play professional and so i left all of that and came back to india um so definitely at a future date one of the reasons why i'm doing my ufi is so that i can pursue coaching at a higher level and um, at the moment i'm looking at going abroad and coaching but yes i'm o- also open to coaching in india obviously i I have been coaching with my uh with the academy that I have in in my city um with individual kids that I do in the off season private coaching um and I just enjoy the the what do you say the interaction that I have with with the kids so yeah. I, I enjoy the interaction and uh, you know I see like a younger version of me in them and i'm able to you know reminisce those years that i had growing up obviously the goal is to give them and give the society back the opportunity that i probably never had while growing up the kind of quality of coaching that i never had um you know at a younger age so obviously yes at maybe at a higher level they will gain professional coaching they will have a better coach but at my academy at the moment uh we encourage the players to uh, go to better coaching facilities if they can you know if they have the opportunity to go to a residential academy or they get a better team we're always in favor of what is best for the players and i think as as a coach i think for me i'm more than happy to see my players grow and you know do better and play at a higher club level or play for state play for national um you know make it to the bigger stage um so yeah you would see me hopefully somebody would be uh, you know believe in my qualities as a coach to employ me as a <laughs> coach but uh, uh, that is one of my you know post retirement maybe goals i would say but at the moment i'm not looking at retiring like i told you i, I feel fitest that i've been in off season so i'm looking to pursue many more years uh, and i'm and i'm um, you know one thing in the covid has made me a lot more i eat lo- a lot more less outside Uh, a lot more healthy uh, which i'm already anyways because i believe in you know food is a medicine so uh, in terms of recovery health um just overall i've made food my lifestyle so um uh, i think i've ne- that's why i said i've not been fitter or you know healthier than i have been before and i don't intend on like besides coaching in the off season i'm not looking at coaching full time at a at a club or taking up a job per se just in coaching and of course all our fans want to know ki i'm sure we ask this every and we get this all the time but favorite footballer of all time and the club you've supported ever since um my favorite footballer has always been constant has always been steven gerrard right from the time i um you know started playing i would say serious football I know uh-huh. everybody in the industry is either Cristiano or Messi, and I wasn't uh-huh. going to go with a with a streamlined option. My my club kind of changed over the years because I always say this: um, the clubs I support are based on the style of play and the players mm-hmm. they have. So initially, I used to be a Chelsea fan, um, but then I because of Mourinho when he came in, 
then i went on to being ever since gerard was part of liverpool i was uh, a liverpool fan to be honest i like leeds united as well they're not a top four team but i love the style they play um and i love what bielsa has done with the the quality of players he has the type of players he has the system he has you know encouraged in in leeds so um i think those are the deciding factors for me well that's a very very neutral way of seeing things keen and i'll give you that i'll give you mark box that but that finally concludes our interview it's been a long one i hope you enjoyed it much as much as you did and this is much i did sorry i'm again having another state of word salad it's not kind of easy like to take this position for a while i can put on top of but keen again from the all ball channel i just want to thank you very much for taking your time to have a chat with us and to just be seeing about your football journey and for that i really do appreciate it uh, for those watching at home as well please don't forget to like share and subscribe give us a couple of these and please look forward to more content of dollboss channel till then see ya thank you guys thank you guys for having me